So we'll begin right here. And we're still, again, speaking on this subject. Everything is sound and light. Everything is sound and light. I have the proverb up here, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I'm here to tell you, I'm not that teacher. <laughs> the teacher is not external. The teacher, <laughs> the teacher is internal. Have to be internal, right. I am just expressing to you what my inner teacher has taught me. Are you all yeah. with me? Mm -hmm. And that is my higher self, higher consciousness, my divinity. What what divinity is is exposing or uh, revealing all of these things at this particular point. I confess, I'm not the teacher. The teacher is within you. What Nasik and I are here to do is to speak things at in a certain frequency, on a certain vibrational frequency that will activate the knowledge, the teacher within you. Simple as that. So we want to express that as often as we can, as often as we can. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. The teachers, see, are these ancient symbols, are, is this language that is hidden in everything. Hidden in everything, right. This language of color, of sound, of number, of shape that is hidden in everything. So this is new territory, family. We have to abandon our old perception, the old paradigm, the entire uh -huh. universe, the entire created universe are your teachers. And it is internal to all of us. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand and when we, ye turn to the left. An indication that we're taking the straight path home. <laughs> express, we on the expressway, no stops. <laughs> <laughs> And the adage is to know thyself. None of this is external to you. Know Theseotan, know thyself. The ancient Greek aphorism, aphorism know thyself or know Theseotan is one of the Delphic maxims and was inscribed in the prana, pranayos, the forecourt of the temple of Apollo at Delphi, also of much earlier uh, structures as well. Before you enter in, they were letting you know that anything that was going to be revealed to you was about yourself. Now, Eta. Yes. At this point right here, this is where your Hebrew is going to have a problem because the, all Hebrews is anti-Greek. Right. Because the Greeks put us in captivity, they believe. And the Greeks is, you know, uh, concealed and hid things because they wanted to use it for themselves. Right. <laughs> and we're we going we gonna to see all of this. We're going to deal with all of this uh, as well. Now, see. So yeah, this is how it was hidden. This is how it was uh, locked down. But 
when we have the perception, when we move from the perspective of holism, now I see all that stuff don't mean anything. Oh, it disappears, yeah. <laughs> the aphorism came from Luxor in ancient Greek. And again, now I see we got another problem because we were taught that the Greeks were, I mean, the, the Greeks as well as the Egyptians were our enemies. Absolutely, right. That's, that's, all, that's all dualism. That's all dualism, right. family. Right. The, afor, the aphorism might have come from Luxor in ancient Egypt. Pre-Socratics, like Thales of Miletus and Pythagoras of Samos, are thought by some to have had Egyptian influences. And they know that this is the case, <laughs> that all of this knowledge was ancient knowledge. It came from all ancient indigenous peoples and particularly uh, from a relatively recent standpoint, all river civilizations, all mm -hmm. ancient river civilizations, mm -hmm. uh, including the Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Including the Mississippi. <laughs> yeah. We always talking about the Tigris and, and the Amazon. Right, Not right. Like that. <laughs> See, our focus has been primarily on just the east now see absolutely right but that is just where the sun rises yeah but this thing has a connection to where the sun sets and this story is being wrapped up family yeah it's a new day and we have to include not just the Tigris, not just the Euphrates, not just the Indus, those civilizations, but these civilizations on this side as well. Yeah. These ancient rivers, as above, so below, they correspond to uh, star systems and constellations, family. Is everyone with me? Mm -hmm. As above, so below. There is knowledge in everything. There is knowledge in everything. We just have to have our eyes uh, open up and our ears, our spiritual organs um, open and activated. In any case, the saying assumes a distinctive meaning and importance in Greek religion and thought. The Greeks attributed much of their wisdom, all of it, as a matter of fact, to Egyptian sources. There are two parts of the ancient Luxor temple. Listen, Nasi covered this. The external temple, that is the extrinsic perspective. That's it the outward perspective where the beginners were allowed to enter and the internal temple where a person was only allowed to enter after proven worthy and ready to acquire more knowledge of and insights. In the Hebrew tradition, you have the temple and the outer court. Yes. Where everyone was welcome, now see? Absolutely. But then yeah. the courtyard, it was only a select few that were allowed to uh, enter and serve there. Then you have the enter behind, the, I mean, the, the uh, inner court called the sanctuary. Are you all right? With Where yeah. uh, and it, it gets even more select. Right. And then, you know, which is called the holy place. Right. And then you have the holy of holies, which yeah. only one could enter. At a particular time, according to a particular to time. 
this is not talking about a religious system. It is right. talking about how you are formulated. Right. And how it is that you get back to your divine source. There is the external temple, Nasi, and external knowledge. Yes, yes. Those are the worshipers. Those are the sacrifice, the, the, the majority of people, family, that resonate or vibrate below 200, the critical level of 200. They have yeah. not elevated their consciousness level to the point where they can see their own divinity and then Nasi began to pursue it, not right. as something external, but as right. something internal. That's correct. One of the proverbs of the external temple is the body is the house of God. And we've all said that the body yeah. is the temple of God. But we have not, you know, most of us, I mean, we have not pursued the divinity within. It's always been through outer expressions of worship. Right trying to please an external God that is not yeah. actually you. That is why it is said, man, know thyself. In the internal temple, one of the many proverbs is, man, know thyself, and you are going to know the gods. In other words, know the divinity. And to know and see now, see, in this, in this aspect or realm of duality and separation and division and diversity, I can begin to see the divinity within myself and the divinity, that same divinity within you. Yes, right. Yes. So this is what we're going to focus on. Man, know thyself. And this portion is going to be entitled, Hugh, man, know thyself. Hugh, man, know thyself. We talked about the importance of this word hue, which in ancient times was the designation, the ancient, very ancient, primal designation for the so-called name of God. And we talked about that that name family, I'll go over it uh, very quickly again, that in English, we have the word name, right? Right. And I explained to you on the last class how the English language is composed primarily of backwards. Is everyone, does everyone remember? Yeah. It's composed of backwards. And we get the word backwards. English and many other languages are both written, spoken, read, and understood from what? Right to yeah, left. Yeah. The ancient, uh, uh, from the perspective of the ancient language, uh, languages and ancient knowledge, this is backwards. Yeah. And this, these are the languages because they are recent. They are languages of the descension. Right. Hebrew, as well as other ancient languages, are written, 
spelled, understood, etc., read from right to left. Knock on. Now, when we see the word name, and we just, with the help of the ancient knowledge, we won't really get into it, but I just want you all to follow me. When you move what is in front, behind, you get the word amen. Are you all with me? And yes, sir. Amen means hidden. Amen Ra means the hidden son or the hidden divinity. All of this is just an indication that the that the word H U that there is something. It is not simply a name, not simply a name. That it is something hidden within this name. I'm going to pause here and I'm going to ask, so hidden in these so-called divine names of God, there's something hidden in them. And specifically, we're going to see that our divine identity is hidden in this fundamental sound, hue, the fundamental sound that is translated into a word in English in a recognizable form, H-U, hue, all right? So we're going to look at this in terms of the word human. because this is going to be instruct, instructive to us. Particularly this word, everything is sound and light. Q has a definition as a sound, correct? Right. It also has definition as a color or refers to color or light. And so we look at the definition. Hue meaning a shouting, an outcry, a noise, right? Mm -hmm. And then hue as a color, Nasi, indicating form, appearance, species, kind, beauty, and skin complexion. Yes. Know thyself. Yeah. Know thyself. Let's follow this. The so-called divine name, again, there's something hidden within this divine name that our ancestors wanted us to see. Come the on, wait. The so-called divine name is Yahuwah, right? That who. Mm -hmm sound right in the beginning right in the beginning and it is right in the middle of the word yeah right here. okay we're going to continue on right in the middle of the name yahuwah we see the word who does everyone see that a -ba. makes the sound who right in the middle. It is not a name, family. 
It is not a name. <laughs> it indicates that at the center of divinity is sound, is sound. Even the word person, all right? The word person. Let's look at the definition. The word person from the 13th century, personae, human being. Okay, we have the word hue again, right? Mm -hmm. Any one person. It says from the Latin persona, again, meaning human being, person, personage, a part in a drama, an assumed character, not the real character, but an assumed character. Originally, mask, false face such as those of wood or clay worn by the actors in the later Roman theater. This is why, now see, it says that man was fashioned from clay. Yeah. Follow me. It's not the real representation. It is a reflection or, or, or a devolved image and likeness of true divinity. Follow me. Persona is related to the Latin personare, personare, to sound through. That is the mask as something spoken through. The thing that, that the sound is coming through. In the beginning was the word. That is that sound, family. Mm -hmm. Perhaps amplifying the voice, amplifying the sound. It is borrowed from the Etrus Etruscan fersu, mask, mask, all right? And then it is compared to Persephone, the wife of Hades, the queen of the underworld, identified with Cori, daughter of Zeus and Demeter, uh, De Demeter, netherworld, underworld of the dead. Now see, this is talking about the fall of the divine feminine, the fall yeah of the sound, the descended nature of the sound. And once, yeah. you, once you get to the, to the bottom line of all this, the divine feminine is there, ready to be activated. Mm -hmm. It fell from the first sound or word, Q, or what we call the Big Bang, and it reverberated what, family? Straight downward into mm -hmm. physicality, from sound to light color, from wave to particle, to the material world. Yes. Yeah. And we, we each find ourselves in the underworld. Has not this experience during this incarnation has not that experience been the lowest experience a people could imagine? Absolutely. This is hell. This is the underworld. This is what we call it. We've reached our lowest vibrational expression. That was the intent. Was it not? Yes, yes. Now, 
this designation of human, H-U or H-U-M uh, dash man, indicates or connotes that in this form, you and I are composed of both sound, light, color, and material. Is everyone with me? Yeah. Our existence, our reality, is formulated from sound descending into light, color, and then expressing itself, Nasi, at first in a non-material fashion or in the form of a wave and then a particle, physical, flesh. Yes, yes. This is what we refer to as the known universe. And we, we have physical sense organs to interpret that reality. Bear with me. Now I want us to look at this. This is the structure. See, the, the, the proverb said to know thyself, correct? Yeah. I want you all to, to notice something. Everything is based on a central chord. Now you all know that chords are related to music, correct? Right. And sound. Our central cord is the spinal cord, is it not? That's correct. At the top, Nasi, it is connected to 12 cranial nerves. Yes. I want us to see how we are structured. At the top, you see a cranial nerve attached to the eye. Does everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Right at the top, connected to the eye. Then the lacrimal gland, all right? Then the mu mucous membrane of the nose and the palate of the mouth. The mouth being both the organ of taste as well as the organ of speech. Yeah. The nose, the palate, all of that, and the lacrimal gland con controlling those functions. Follow me now. Also, the other nerves con uh, connected to the mucous membrane as well, the mouth, what is called the parotid gland. And watch this. Those are all, Nasi, they combine to allow us to interpret particles, the particle aspect of sound. 
the particle aspect, I should say, of sound, light, and color. The particle aspect of sound, light, and color. In other words, it helps us to interpret and to define, to define and interpret what we call the physical universe. The physical universe is not external. It is internal. <laughs> Your eyes don't express, don't, don't express anything outward. Your nose does not express anything outward. Your mouth, however, can take things in and out. Is that not correct? Correct. Follow me now. The next cranial nerve which is the 10th cranial nerve coming from the spinal cord corresponds to the heart. It was the vibration, I want you all to see that, the first sound vibration was that when, when, when the scripture says the spirit, listen, moved on the face of the waters. That word move is the word racha, racha. And we looked at this and it meant to shake, to move, to flutter to hover, all right? And it says also, family, to be soft, to be moved or affected, especially with the feeling of tender love. And we said that the first vibrational frequency was that of love an expression of love. Whatever frequency that love vibrates on was that frequency that went forth first. I'm going to pause here and, and again ask, does everyone uh, understand what I'm speaking about at this point. Language. Now, get to this portion where he's speaking about this. Okay, here it is. So it gets even deeper, though. Languages are symbols, mathematical express. Languages and symbols should not be separated. This yes. is something that we've been emphasizing from the very right. beginning. And what this book starts to show is that the. So. The other part of this is here that I want you all to, to, to see how this language is vocalized. Now, when I talk about language family, I'm talking about not just words. I'm talking about sound. There's exactly. a difference, Nasi. There's a difference. Make it clear. We see here, and I'll go back. How the heart 
is above the larynx, the trachea, the bronchi. These are a series, family, follow me, of membranes, a membrane in terms of sound, Nasi, is a dimension. Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. like it is like a uh, it is like a skin of a drum mm -hmm. that is stretched over a shape, a right. geometric shape. Please follow me. Mm -hmm. The heart is called an organ, is it not? Yeah. Secrets of the universe, family, but you just have to know yourself. This is not outside information. An organ, it is a fusion of late old English. Organe or organ, old French origine, both meaning musical instrument. I'm going to say that again. So we get the word tehum or tehom, which is related to the word hum. We go to the next expression. Which is H 8416, which is Tahila. Which is translated in the scripture in its plural sense. Uh, Tehillim as the word Psalms, which is poetry songs, right, and the spoken language. This is how sound is descending, and it's giving its uh, nasi from nonverbal to verbal expression, which is a lower frequency or a lower expression of nonverbal. Is everyone with me? Mm-hmm. Now, watch this. This is going to get us back to the body now. Know thyself. Tahila is related to the word Hallel. And Hallel is the biblical allegorical character of Lucifer. Of Lucifer. Follow me now. Don't get scared. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get spooky on me. This is our science. Now, see, that was hidden. And, he said. <laughs> and <clears throat> remember, everything is sound and light. So that phrase is personified in the biblical caricature, the allegorical caricature of Lucifer. And watch this. Lucifer is an insertion for this name. Now, Lucifer means what? Light bearer, huh? Light bearer light bearer, which is what we are, Nazi, in physical descendant form. We were, we were the light, and then as we descended, we became bearers of the light. Does that make sense? Yes. So again, this word Lucifer, 
and it says, how art thou fallen from heaven? Isn't that just what I said? Mm -hmm. That as we descended from non-physical representation of divinity, of sound and light, we descended into light color and moved from wave to particle in the descension. Yes. This is yes. why it's speaking of us. How art thou fallen? Yes. O Lucifer, sun in the morning. How art how, how art thou cut down to the ground? And not just the surface of the ground, like we said, the underworld. Yeah. The underworld. Lucifer is actually the word halal. Halal, the part of Tahila. The latter part of Tahila. Ye are the light of the world. Right? That's what we say. That's right. So we became we become the light bearers. The character, the character Jesus said, What? Ye are the light of the world. But you don't hide your light. And that is that divine light or that divine spark that we each carry uh, with us and retain, Nasi, throughout the descent, throughout the, the fall. So this... Itai, yes. Just a point there, the light being, you know, this, you know, this holistic divinity of consciousness that's right when it, was, when it was inverted that's how it got put on the bushel so this is why lucifer becomes the devil right this is why lucifer that aspect of us because that is the lowest that is us in descent falling yeah. from heaven do we see yeah. that family yeah that is the our divinity descending into physical form and representation. You know, the Hebrews now, they're going to tell you that that's the devil. And of course, it ain't it ain't us. You know, right. it's always somebody outside of us is a spirit. That's right. <laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, and I see that's that's very dualistic. Very dualistic. Because if you have an external devil or any type of external adversary, you're yet in dualism. <laughs> and, 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 and you 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 must externalize divinity or God as well. Absolutely. Ain't Absolutely. no way you're going to ascend. There is no Absolutely. way that you will ascend. Absolutely. Sound... Uh, he, he's described this Lucifer character, just follow me now, is described in the book of Ezekiel. The 28th chapter and the 13th verse. We're closing, family. This Lucifer and it begins with the 11th verse. We're going to come back and decode this thoroughly at a later time, family. But I just want us to get introduced to this and to understand this from the perspective of everything is sound and light. Son of man, moreover rather, the 11th verse, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum Listen, thou sealest, sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Watch this. Right, right. See, 
we have to look at this family. Remember, that as we trace this, no, it's not here, that as we traced well, let's just put in the word beauty. As we trace this, this word, follow me. Listen, now remember it says perfect in beauty, correct? Yeah. Now watch this, Isaiah 40, uh, 47, and I, I don't have the verse designation. Forgive me, but I'll find it. Come down and sit in the dust. This is right. talking about our descent. O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt not that thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. In a certain aspect of our expression of divinity in descent, we were more spiritual, more non-physical than we were physical. Is everybody with me? Yeah. At that point, I see we were tender and delicate. But at the end of this descent, we would be sitting in the ground, sitting in the dust. No crown, no divinity, no semblance of royalty. Is that not our current situation? That's our current situation. Yeah. How has the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with the cloud in his anger, cast down from heaven unto earth? Now, is that the daughter of Zion or is that Lucifer or is this an allegorical way of speaking of both the masculine and feminine aspects of our divinity? Cast down from heaven like Lucifer unto the earth, the beauty of Israel going back. And it says, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius is talking about these different bodies. Now see that we have these different forms. Yes. The sardias, topaz, these different ethereal bodies that we have, family, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets. Okay, let's mm -hmm. find out that the tabrets are your organs. Yeah. And the pipes. The tabrets is it's a tabret is like a uh, is 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 like a tambourine. It is a skin stretched over a geometric shape, is it not? Mm-hmm. And it resembles all of these organs. That's what these organs are. They they are just membrane what we call skin stretched over what? Geometric shapes, are they not? Yes, yes, yes. Sir. And that they have what attached to them? Pipes. Watch this. In other words, they have receptors attached to them. That, that's correct. And it says, the workmanship of thy tabrets, those are the organs, and thy pipes. Those are the nerve endings. Yeah. The arteries, the capillaries that are attached. The workmanship of thy tablet was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art anointed carob that covereth. 
and I have set thee also. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou was has walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. This is just talking about us in our descent, descended aspect, in yeah. our descended form over time. Now, see, during this declination, during Dang. this fall into materialism, see, a religious mindset will not allow you to understand this. Right. It will not allow you to understand this at all. Bear with me, family. I'll get to this. Uh, let me find it here. Because this is contained, this process is contained in a definition that we that we went over earlier. He died that scriptural reference in Isaiah was 47 and 1. Okay, thank you very much. So when we look at Hugh in terms of its expression as light and color we see follow me very closely fam we see the descendant aspect of light as it descends it is first a wave and it is sensed now see from a physical aspect as color. Mm -hmm. Then it takes on form. Are you all with me? Mm -hmm. Tohu vabohu, it says without form, but, it, but as it moves into the descension, it takes on form. We, divinity took on form. Then mm -hmm. appearance, now see, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then descended into more dualism, separation, and diversity, and expressed mm -hmm. itself in terms of species. Mm -hmm. Then kind, and then what we call beauty. So this is where we see that this beauty that existed in a certain form descended itself. Are you all with me? Mm -hmm. It was first the expression of wisdom and the perfection of beauty. But then wisdom and beauty, now I see, descended. Mm -hmm until we find ourselves where we are now. And we've gone over these scriptures, you know, before in this relationship. So I'm going to stop right here as we close and then ask again any questions or comments.